Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, and feel free to comment down below what you would like me to do for future anime and cartoon-related videos. So today, we are talking about Tower of God, Season 1, Episode 11, and the beginning part kind of confused the crap out of me. Uh, so I thought there was going to be a lot more to it, uh, with Bam kind of meeting the test administrator type of thing. Um, but it was weird because, like, the director could hear exactly what Bam was saying and was, like, speaking on behalf of the administrator, um, which I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But uh, if you remember that giant crazy uh, serpent thing from episode... One, uh, this is basically like a humongous talking version of that is the best way to describe it. We don't get to see the entire thing. Um, bam, wouldn't even really be a snack for it. It'd be like the equivalent of us eating a peanut. Um, just There's just the, sh the sheer size of this, <laughs> this thing. Uh, he actually even says that Bam looks kind of tasty. Um, but we don't really get to hear the whole conversation. Uh, basically, we hear it from Bam later on. And the administrator said that uh, the reason I want to get to the top of the tower, or the, he said to the administrator, I should say, is the reason that he wanted to get to the top of the tower is uh, to get Rachel up there, see the stars, and just, you know, hang out eating with his friends. Because at this point in time, pretty much the, he's had nobody but Rachel, so he hasn't really had any of the other friends. He loves Rachel, but he enjoys the friendship as well, being around all these other people, because this is the first time he's around anybody else. And um, he's just having a great, fun time, you know, hanging out with his friends, eating lunch, you know, having a conversation, as I'm sure most of us would have be more than happy to do as well, uh, especially in these current times, but that is what it is. Um, so, kind of moving on from there, the test that they, they are in, the final test to finally get to level 3, holy crap, it's taking forever, I thought this was going to be a, like, you know, like an episode level type situation, um, and then it'll take like 100 episodes or so, maybe a little more to get to the top, I believe there is like 130 something levels, I went and looked at the wiki, I think it's roughly like 130-something episodes. Um, I'm very interested in the fact that Rachel cannot walk anymore. So so how is she going to get to the top of the tower? How is she going to become a ranker? Because if you have all these little tests with point systems in them, um, mentally, yes, she can focus mentally and kind of do the stuff that Kuhn is doing in his tower, uh, but she doesn't really have a way too much to defend herself. I'm hoping eventually... That she gets kind of full control of the uh, Sinshui, or however you pronounce that. The, basically, the magical power of the tower. And um, if she's not able to actually walk, she's able to float. So basically, meaning she can control all of her movements. Yes, her legs are technically useless. And that, or she surrounds her legs in them, is able to walk again. Um, that would definitely be interesting to see, too. I'm guessing maybe that'll happen at some point. Because I just cannot foresee her getting to the top of the tower with... Bam, Rack, and Coon uh, getting her up there. Uh, Shibushi, uh, the guy in the jumpsuit, he's actually jealous of um, Bam and Rachel's relationship uh, because, because, as I believe it was Serena told him in the previous episode, that uh, the reason Bam's so happy and giddy about everything is because all these people that are coming to the tower, the reason they're coming to the tower is because they have something taken from them and they want to get revenge, like a knock. Um, they're part of a family they have to live up to, uh, like in Dorsey. Um, you know, they have a terrible past, like Ho, and they want to try to fill that void in their heart from, you know, watching the people die. They want to become stronger. Something has been taken from them, and that seems to be the general purpose of them climbing the tower so they can kind of fill that void in their life in order to further climb the tower. Uh, so let's kind of get on to the whole test aspect, what's happening with that. Basically... Bam and Rachel are in this giant bubble thing. There's a crazy monster that sucks up dolphin seal things and spits them out. Uh, it doesn't really harm anything. Basically, it sucks you up and spits you out. Um, it eats fish. So it's semi like the whole whale scene in Finding Nemo where the whale is eating all the krill and you have uh, Dory and Marlin there in the mouth and shoots it out. It's, it, it's basically that's what's going to happen. Is it creates a uh, magical net. With all the dolphins, the fish, Bam and Rachel in it, sucks it up, the dolphins and the fish get spit out, and that's how they win. However, there are a lot of obstacles. So they have this crazy demon thing, let's talk about that, um, who in reality is controlled by 
Uh, the Royal Guard member number 67. I don't believe we get a name. He looks like a giant marshmallow with horns. He has this crazy tongue thing, shoots a lot of stuff out of his mouth. I don't think it's his real body. I think it's some sort of costume he wears. Um, but it could be his real body. I'm not really sure. Uh, basically, his sole purpose is to kill Anak, which he basically already did. Like, the, the, the amount of power this guy has compared to everybody else is just unfair right now. It's like... If you put Goku versus Naruto, sure, uh, you know, the Naruto would probably be good to go a little bit in base form for a little while when he was in full power, but inevitably, go, yeah, it ain't, ain't going to happen. Goku's going to wipe the floor with him. And basically what happens with that is An Anak gets stabbed through the chest. I don't know if she's going to live or die. She's currently alive. Um... And Dorsey got beat up pretty bad by the demon thing, too. This giant, crazy eye creature with this weird tongue tentacle thing. Um, and I think the reason it gets more powerful is because the closer it is to the controller, the more powerful it gets, I'm guessing, is how it works. Um, we actually get a little bit about that, too, with uh, the small, cute little blonde girl whose name I cannot remember for the life of me because she hasn't become an important character yet. She has the ability to control like this animal thing. Um, and basically, like a dolphin, it has, it has sonar and it can track all of the uh, tunnels going underground, helping out the entire team to get Bam and Rachel sucked up into that giant monster thing to get eaten and spit back out. Um, so I'm guessing it's kind of similar like that. The farther they are away, the more control they use. Lose, lose, use, lose, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's basically how that works. And uh, not get stabbed. Uh, and basically, he says, "In Dorsey, uh, this is your chance to prove that you are worthy to be called the true princess of jihad." He drops the green April. We don't know where the Black March is at this point because I thought Anak was going to pull that out and use it, honestly, uh, because when he took away the weapon, ate it, <laughs> literally ate it. Um, he, I, I thought she was going to pull that out and attack him with it, but that was not the case. So he drops it in front of Endorsey to attack, uh, Anak, and that's kind of how the episode ends. My guess is there's going to be another twist, uh, because she sees Rachel in this whole situation as an easier way to get to the top of the tower to become a ranker. So it would not surprise me if both of them actually team up and try to kill this royal guard. Um, or maybe I'm wrong and Anak will die. That would kind of suck. I mean, Anak's very cold, but she's powerful, she's cool, and I generally like her character, so I would hate to see her go. Her her, I'd like to see her revenge uh, get carried out, or at least somewhat carried out before she dies. Or, you know, and then basically I think um, this is the person that killed her, her mother, most likely. And I say that because uh, he has the necklace that um, Anak gave his mother, or her mother gave Anak, you know, in the fire. So 9 out of 10, that was the guy that killed, uh, we'll, we'll call it Anak Sr. and Anak Jr., <clears throat> um, most likely, is how that worked. Because we don't actually really know Anak's real name, because she just took her mother's name uh, in order to try to climb the tower. But uh, obviously, the director knows about it, and he is working with the Royal Guards to basically get rid of her. So she may become a future problem, but it's kind of messed up because you can already see the hierarchy in the tower. Because it's like, oh, you were born, and that is why you must die. Like, that's that's pretty messed up because she wasn't... Uh, you know, because she she wasn't the ideal person. You know, she she wasn't born the way she should have been. Uh, she deserves to die, and that that is a pretty pretty messed up system. So I, I would assume that they're going to tackle that system at some point as well. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. So kind of going back to the test, the test, test, test. Uh, what happens with that is uh, there's basically these goblin guys. These giant worm things that uh, also suck up all the dolphins and fish. And the issue is if they suck up the worm things with the goblins, suck up the dolphins and fish, um, the giant monster will release the net because it's not going to be able to catch anything and they'll fail the test. Obviously, they have to pass the test, uh, but there is a lot of them. There's also these crazy pig things, pig alligator things that look like rack a little bit and... Uh, they mentioned that for one minute, and um, Rack was like, ha, they don't look like me, blah, blah, blah. Rack is no longer tiny, which is good. Uh, so the director did change him back before he <laughs> took the test. I was like, oh, God, we're a tiny Rack forever. That's going to be adorable and hellish for him. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Um, but who knows? And 
basically another one of the spear bearers where he was with through the spear it actually killed one of them and he was like is the weak guy one of the weak guys too that ran away and deserted hots or in an early in the uh i think it was an episode or two ago um he ran he was like oh crap what did i do it, it messed up coon's plan and now there's going to be a problem because they're going to have to fight all these crazy goblin dudes in order to win and because they basically need to kill the worm that, that's their biggest issue is if they stop the worms from doing all the sucking of the fish and the and the seals then uh kind of problem solved they win but obviously it's going to be a lot harder than that but basically the reason they designed this test was to get rid of a knock so that that was the primary reason i don't know yet if they're trying to get rid of rachel and bam uh, i don't know if rachel's technically an irregular or not yet i know bam is um so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that but i don't foresee rachel getting up the tower unfortunately in her present condition unless as i said unless bam uses his uh you know his abilities to get her to walk or she uses her abilities to walk then i could definitely foresee in the future um her being able to you know continue fighting and becoming more powerful um as bam i'm assuming will be at one point too uh, we get to see yuri for like three seconds so they're going to come into play at some point too because uh, i because i know she wants the black march back so i'm wondering if she's actually going to end up killing that royal guard member and helping in a dorsey in a knock in that fight um you know we got to see evan yuri and i think there's a couple other people with her too uh not exactly sure but basically they have to go into it this very sneaky way because they're not actually allowed to go into the tests while the testing is being done. They can't really see any of the contestants, minus the obviously the administrator and the director. But who knows? As I said, next episode, that's what I'm guessing this is going to happen. Yuri's going to make an appearance with Endorsey and Anak. Anak may or may not die. Um, they may pass the test next episode. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I could definitely see uh you know there's only two episodes left so nine out of ten um episode 12 is probably going to be them passing the test episode 13 is probably going to be like a happy-go-lucky type thing and then them getting ready to get into level three but not actually getting into level three is probably what's going to happen so my name is steve gray thank you for watching this has been a review of tower of god season one episode 11 and as always have a good one